This is how to use the Cane Masters Cane, Self-Defense Cane, home training for beginners or intermediate or advanced. No matter what your level is, hopefully you'll learn a little bit or you'll relearn something maybe you've forgotten. Take the cane in the palm of your hand. I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit. You can see I'm still setting up the new virtual dojo here, but I wanna give you the mirror shot so that if I happen to do something fancy with my feet, which I won't, you'll be able to see it. But you're gonna hold your palm facing the sky, the long side of your self-defense cane is gonna come out of your palm and you're gonna turn your cane master self-defense cane. And if you don't have a cane master self-defense cane yet, start with whatever you've got. Your crook right here might be more narrow. Sometimes if you get like a Carex cane or one of the other store-bought canes, they come in this way. The best thing to do is just cant your hand a little bit sideways and it'll still work for you. Not as smoothly as a cane master self-defense cane, but you're still gonna be able to do this basic combat cane spinning using a cane master's cane or any other self-defense cane. From here, you're gonna do this for about 30 seconds. This is gonna force your stomach up in and good afternoon, Matthew. Good afternoon on the last day of the year. But doing this turn, and I wanted you to see that my hand is gripping very gently. It's not a tight grip, it's not gonna spin. You want a loose and firm, firm enough that it doesn't fly out of your hand. So close the C right there, and then cranking forward, just like you're turning a crank, and you're gonna get it to go forward. Happy New Year, Doug, it's good to see you. Glad you're doing well, hope you feel good today. Going round and round, and then from here, you're gonna go over and back in a figure eight motion or an infinity motion, just like this. That's the gentle description. I also like to think of it as a slap across the face with an open palm or a backhand for self-defense coming the other way. So this would be the slap across the face and then you would backhand the other way if that helps you think about it and translate it in a way that as you're training with your cane master self-defense cane at home, you can get this basic motion down. The purpose of this spin is to start to develop callus on your hands and get proprioception. That means your body becomes aware of how this thing is moving through space and time. Your timing and distance will improve. Your overall fitness will improve. This is good cardiovascular fitness. This motion, this combat cane spinning, is sort of like a boxer jumping rope. So think of this as your warm up jump roping session, and you can do this standing. You can also do this sitting in a chair, maybe a wheelchair. This is great for senior self-defense if you're not as able or mobile as you used to be. This is great for other able or disabled, whatever you wanna challenge, however you call it for yourself. It's good for everybody, right? It's good for women's self-defense, men's self-defense. It's great for senior self-defense. I also think of this as kind of like a home insurance policy or a car owner's insurance policy, because I carry this, carry one of these in my car. And whenever I get gas these days, the number of violent assaults at the gas station, and I live in an area where there's a little bit more violence, especially at the gas station, a lot more uh, aggressive panhandlers. I had someone argue with me this week, demanding that I give him something, and I said no. And by the way, let me throw that out there since we're talking about it. If you find yourself victim and you don't feel comfortable with someone aggressively asking you for something and you don't feel safe and they are closing the distance, a lot of times they're doing that on purpose. Their intention is to make you feel nervous, make you feel uncomfortable, make you feel afraid so that you're more likely to give them what they want. Instead of saying no thank you or no please, instead of uh, saying no I don't have any or no, I can't, or whatever. Just say no and leave it at that. But say it in a way that it's a command. No means no, right? Not no thank you, not no please, not um, no I don't think so, not in a timid way, but very direct. It might, might take them, uh, catch them off guard, which is what you want. They're trying to intimidate you. You don't wanna intimidate anybody, but you do wanna set a boundary, and this is one of the first ways you do that. You just say no and then you keep walking, but don't turn your back on them, keep an eye on them, and carry your self-defense cane. All right, this is your warm-up, your warm-up is done, let's talk about how you defend yourself, and I wanna start in a way that I don't normally start. I'm gonna show you a kick first that I want you to practice if you're able to. If you're not able to kick, don't kick. 
If you are able to kick even in a small amount, then start to kick. None of the cane self-defense, no, no self-defense kick. I won't say no, because th there is always an exception to every rule. But most of the kicks you're gonna do in self-defense are not like martial arts kicks. This is not for a judge or on a stage or in a movie to look a certain way. This is to be very practical, very effective. The basic rule of self-defense is what can you remove or destroy? His ability to see you or breathe temporarily permanent, his, his ability to stand up, his ability to be awake, maybe you knock him out. In this case, it's his ability to close the distance and come after you. We'll say this down here is the foot, and there's the mirror. You can see now what I'm doing with my feet. So if I bring my knee up, and it doesn't have to come very high, and I swing from the knee, let me see if I can get back far enough that you can see that I'm just swinging my foot just a little bit. Now, which foot are you going to do that with when you're using the cane? Typically, you carry the cane for, uh, when you're walking around, when you're using it for medical reasons or to ambulate, to get around, you'll carry it on the side that is not as effective. So if this is the more injured side, I would carry it in my right. In my left leg, let's say my left hip, my left knee is sore or tired or not as strong or injured, I'd carry it in the right. And these two would move together and using this leg, which is not as strong as this cane, which is very strong, that would support me when I bring my strong leg through. On the self-defense kick, you can do the kick in the same way. So you're gonna use your strong leg using the cane in your leg that's not as strong. And if both your legs are strong, use whatever leg you want. You're gonna lift your knee and push. Now, I want you to see that I'm gonna drop the camera here for just a second. I know we have not talked about kicks for self-defense with cane very often. We have every once in a while. And I'm wearing my shoes because I want you to be wearing shoes when you can, because shoes are harder, especially if you have a hard-soled shoe, it's gonna do more damage. If we say, that's his ankle, right? I'm going really low. I want to lift and bring my foot with my body weight into his shin. So I'm using the cane, oh, there it goes my band. I'm using my cane and my weaker leg for support, and I just lift and kick. Now, if that's not possible for you, don't do it. But if you can, that's the first kick. The second kick I want you to think about is just a stomp straight down. So it's not really a kick, but a stomp. If his foot is right here, stomping forward. If his foot is right here, stomping over. If he's right behind you, stomping back with your heel is one of your stronger stomps. But just lift and push straight down. So we're gonna talk, I'll bring the camera up in a minute, we'll talk about why we're gonna stomp on his foot. Stomping here, stomping here, stomping here. If this leg is, if you can do it with it, you can stomp with that leg. The last kick is just from here, pushing straight back. So your knee comes up a little and your heel is going to push into, it's going in two directions, it's going back and down, and I'm going into his shin. And I'm gonna let that heel Hopefully you're wearing nice hard shoes or thick soled shoes like this. And you're gonna let that rake all along his shin. If he's just wearing pants, if he has shorts on, it's even worse. Hopefully he's got something on, but you never know. Yeah, stop, don't, but don't worry. If you can stomp on the top of his arch, go for it. If you just hit his toes, go for it. The question was stomping on the top of his arch. The point is stomp on him, okay? Now here's why. We're gonna start with that first front kick. If you need to review, go back and look at the kicks, but they're super simple. The first one, lift your knee, kick forward. Second one, stomping down. Last one, back and down. And these are, and again, when you walk with your cane, weak side, strong side, you move these two together, and then you bring your strong side through. So that allows you kick forward, stomp down, kick back. Three basic kicking motions. I count the, the downward stomp as a kick. So uh, D Doug says, Matt, really good ideas. Thanks, Doug, I appreciate that. But here's, here's what we're doing. Remember the general rule of self-defense self has to be based on principles and not techniques. Let me define a technique. That's a technique. This is a technique. That's a technique, that's a technique, and a kick is a technique. Those are all techniques and you can use any technique. But the principles are going to be much more important. The principles first, First principle of self-defense with a cane or anything else, and this is the cane master self-defense cane, 
Look below to that first link if you need more information on getting or just what they look like, you know, you might be thinking about it in the future. All the information about Cane Masters canes are down below in that first link. First principle of self-defense, whether it's with cane or anything else, is situational awareness. Pay attention to what's happening. You won't always be able to stop it before it comes to you. Or you see it in the distance, you cross the street, you don't go out of your house, you park in a different place, you don't get gas at that gas station. I went to the gas station closest to the store that I was at, knowing that it was a rough gas station. It was right in the Walmart, right in one of the uh, toughest parts of town. And right when I pulled in, I thought, big mistake. And not that I'm afraid for my safety per se. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm smart. Anybody could have one of these. Anybody can have one of these. So I'm not going to uh, invite uh, a violent altercation. I certainly don't want to do that. But I don't normally, I'm not as nervous as some people might be. Let's say that. I'm very aware though. And when I pull in, out of the corner of this eye, I see one guy waiting. He immediately stands up and starts to approach me. He's the free, he, and, and then I, and I tell him, he comes up, he, hey man, can I, can, I, can I get at you? Can I talk to you? Can I talk? And I said, no. <laughs> Just like that, I was very, very um, direct, like I had said. And it was, it was uh, I don't know, it was, it was a couple days ago. It was just the wrong time. I had the wrong sense about the guy. He didn't look like somebody who needed my help. <laughs> he looked like somebody who was feeding an addiction. I don't know. That's judgmental. But I just said no. And if, if you like self-defense, if you like Kane self-defense, please give me a thumbs up. This is, this is an important topic for me, which is why I want to talk about it. Just say no. But I saw him. I saw two others over there. And I saw some guys in the corner. There were five people who were coming up at different times aggressively approaching people and asking them for money. And so in that case, like I said, it's, it's my auto insurance policy. It sits on the uh, passenger side of the car. When I got out, I got out originally without it, hadn't thought about it, and then immediately said, I'm gonna grab the cane, and I stood there pumping my gas like this. One hand here, one hand here. I can immediately address the threat if I need to, and we're gonna go over that in a second. But the reason for the kick, his interaction with me was all here to here. He's coming up to me, he's very aggressive, and he's practiced it over and over again. He's done it, he's very experienced. He knows how to close the distance as fast as possible to get into my uh, personal safety zone, which is one of the ways that he probably gets more money. He does that to people all day, they feel intimidated, they give him something to get rid of him. So as he's closing the distance, I stopped him with my voice, which is what I want you to practice, Strong. It's a command, not a request. It's not an ask. You're not saying please. No. And if he gets closer, I would have said back up. And then a second later, I would have had the cane in a ready position. It's probably like this. Lately, more like this. It's, you know, because, because this one, I'm going to show you why. This is more for close combat. But in this position, no, I'm, I'm not a threat. I'm not trying to start a fight. But I am giving the signal, stop and I'm ready to defend myself, which is what I want you to adopt. That's why we're here. This is what we're doing. Happy New Year. Beth, it's good to see you. Yeah, verbal, Doug says verbal judo. So we're doing a little verbal judo. And if he had closed the distance or caught me off guard, all of a sudden he's this close. His intent, his, he's trying to um, mentally use his verbal judo against me to intimidate me, to try to frighten me into giving him what he wants or to put me in a cowering position so he can strike me, I am going to, as, a, um, as I go through my list, the question I'm gonna ask myself is what can I remove or destroy? His ability to see me or breathe temporarily or permanently, his ability to stand upright or even lower, to stand upright like a knee or a cane or here or putting the helmet on like we talk about, bringing that in for self-defense, using this for balance. I have all these as an option, but I also want you to know that you have this kick right into the lower part of his leg. And this is something I have done before and have practiced, and it works very effectively. Someone, uh, it was, uh, there was a knife involved, and it wasn't that much of a threat, but I told this person, you take that out again, I'm gonna remove it, I'm gonna take it from you, and I'm not gonna give it back to you. And I never did. And he did, he took it out, he had been intimidating other people, as he brings his hand in here, the first kick was here, my hands were here, I was here, and then I was there, and then it was over. He was on the ground, I hog-tied him and put him in the back of a bus <laughs> to teach him a lesson. A long time ago, I was, I was younger and, and stupid, 
but I, I had warned him and he, he, was, he was younger and more stupid than I was. Anyway, the point is, you can, you can lift your knee and you can take the focus from here. His, all of this focus, all this energy is here. Now if you put your foot down there, that brings him into this position. Then you can use your cane. You can snatch this up between his legs. You can thrust here. You can push here. You can box the ears, bring it down on top. But you can start on the bottom. You can also, if he's even closer or has his hands on you, you can stomp on that foot. And that's why I want you to practice the stomp, right? If his hands are on you, I want you to immediately put your helmet on. If his hands are here, you're either going to come, if you can, your hand through his hands, and you're going to stomp. And as you stomp, you drive this right into his face for self-defense. This is the cane master self-defense cane. So everything that we're talking about is self-defense. But when it's someone who's stronger or bigger, who's in uh, intending to hurt you or intimidate you, and they've closed the distance into your safety zone, don't wait for them to stick the knife in you 20 times. Don't wait for them to pull out another weapon. Don't wait for them to um, hurt you or somebody else. In other words, don't, don't give them the opportunity to take the first shot if you don't have to. So, yeah, and, and Doug says the heel stomp. Now, the heel stomp... When they're, as, when they're behind you. If you realize someone's behind you, whether they grab you, and if, if you have your cane here, this is very effective, by the way. You can turn, let me see if I can get this in here. I know you can see it from the angle of the camera, but as I turn and I look, this elbow is just coming up, and I'm using the length of this cane, right? Hopefully, I wanna knock them out, put them asleep. This is self-defense, put them to sleep for self-defense, let the cops come and pick them up. And if you don't get this straight back motion, you can get the angle and bring it in. And it's very strong, very effective, and it works on that principle of turning your shoulders and hips. You're stronger in every strike when you turn your shoulders and hips and when you also move your body forward. So that's the purpose of the three kicks. So we can go back and review this part, the first part of the video where we talk a lot about how to use three basic kicks in cane self-defense. But I wanna talk about two other things very quickly because my time is short. And one is holding the cane with the crook side out, which is ergonomically stronger, allows you to just lift this and snatch it up between his legs. If your cane is in the other position, you can also do that. That's not as strong as that, but they're close enough that you can snatch it up here, or if your palm is here, snatch it up in any, any amount of speed and power with this hard piece of oak or hickory, and you can get this made in hickory or oak. Hickory is like seven bucks more. Look at the link below. These are very affordable. Self cane master self-defense cane. Right between the legs is very effective. From here, whether I'm here or here, I'm gonna allow the other hand to come on, and I'm gonna keep my elbows down and push in with my foot. I'm stepping in, right? I think you can see in the mirror, that's a step. If I step and thrust just a little bit, it takes all the pressure off of your shoulders. So if your shoulders are not as strong, you don't have to worry about it. If you bring your elbows up, you put all of the pressure onto your shoulders and you better have strong shoulders. So practice from here, snatch it up between his legs or hit him up under the chin, get the other hand on it and push. To adjust the angle, maybe you wanna go for the throat or the face, simply lift this up and down and just push and it doesn't have to be a hard strike because you're using the leverage of your body and the length of this hard piece of wood to go through his face nose throat wherever you can so from here snatch push and then i want you to turn step in as far and as fast as you can step in with one foot and just push with both hands like you're doing a push-up and see how my hand is here it's like a handle my hand is here, it's like the bar, I'm pushing on the bar of a door, and I'm just going straight through. And again, you're using your cane, you're using your cane master self-defense cane, hickory or oak, whatever cane you have, to go against his nose, teeth, throat, body, as hard as you can. Because that is so hard and this is so soft and so many nerves and, and the brain's in there and the eyes and the nose, you're gonna do a lot of damage. Take his teeth straight down his throat, literally. For self-defense, but that's a cane master self-defense cane. This is how to use the cane for self-defense. As a beginner, intermediate, advanced, doesn't really matter. 
So practice one, two, and then three. Coming back, you can strike down over the head. You can turn and rake using the tooth here to come down here. So you can practice up under the legs or into the chin, thrust into the body, pushing. See how I just pull this in? It's not out here. This puts more pressure on my shoulder. I just pull it to my chest and I turn my shoulders and hips. You're very strong this way from here. And then I just turn it up the other way and use that, use this hand to rake. You don't need a lot of pressure. You knew just a little bit with that beveled edge and this cane master, cane master self fence cane, you're gonna go into nerve, uh, eyeballs, the eye will come out of his head for self-defense, his nose will come off of his face for self-defense. You're gonna rip teeth out of his mouth for self-defense. You'll go through and rip his face off for self-defense. It's gruesome, it's gross, but it's self-defense and I want you to mean it. When you defend yourself, I want it to work for you. You can go into the neck, you can go into the muscles, you can go into the muscles of the chest or the flat or the flab or whatever's there. You can go in between the ribs and you can do a lot of damage for self-defense using that right there. So practice this in combination. Put it in one hand, practice snatch, and you don't have to hit a target, just do it in the air. Thrust, notice I took a step with the opposite foot. If you can't take a step with that foot, step with the other foot. If you can't take a step, do it in, in place. Take a step here if you can, or the other foot, it doesn't matter. Turn it down, turn it around this way, and pulling and raking with that one across the face. Now, after you've done one side, if you can, put it in the other hand, practice the same combination. First one is snatch it up, thrust, push, turn, rake. And that's a basic combination you can practice over and over again. I want you to show you, I want to show you one more. Um, I'm going to show, give you something to practice for the new year, right? This is New Year's resolution, New Year's goals, whatever works best for you. But if you're looking for a combination of things to practice, Start with it in the other way. This is also going to build a lot of physical fitness and ability in your body. This is going to make you much stronger. Yeah, uh, uh, Doug said, I think Matt and Doug are talking about um, how vicious fighting can be. And we're talking self-defense. Self-defense is a little bit different than martial arts. It's even different than boxing. It's violence. You're using violence to stop violence against you. Someone's trying to take away your life, your dignity, your freedom, your stuff. That, that, that keeps you alive. I mean, if it's, you know, money or whatever, you can always get more money. You can always get more of whatever. Give them that stuff. Don't risk your life over that. Don't take someone's life over that. It's not worth it. However, if it's your life, if it's your dignity or your life or your freedom or your health or the love, your loved ones, somebody else, then stand up for yourself, fight for yourself. You might be your own first responder. You might have to be your own, your own bodyguard, your own sentinel, your own guardian, because the ones that we pay are out there being, and I've ta I talked to two law enforcement people this week, local, and they both said the same thing. They feel, and this is a more supportive community, but they feel constantly under attack. And they're more cautious about when they respond to calls. They're more cautious about what weapon they draw to, um, to address the situation. They're more cautious about stopping cars. They won't do it. They're more, uh, and so, and it's, and it's, this is happening everywhere, right? And so you might have to be your own first responder. It's sad. It's disgusting. We shouldn't be at this place, but we are. So since we are, let's be our own first responder. Let's prepare so we don't have to panic. So from here, prepare so you don't perish, right? From this position, I want you to bring it up and let it slide down a little bit. Then I want you to bring it to your shoulder and practice this slashing angle, this first attack. It's extremely strong and powerful. You're going to knock them out. Knock them unconscious for self-defense when you can. If they have a weapon, you won't have to worry about the weapon. You don't want to try to block or take it away from them um, and time that, right? If you can, knock them to the ground unconscious, let the cops come and pick them up or the coroner or somebody else for your safety, for self-defense, the cane master self-defense cane. Turning and then to the other shoulder. And I want you to take it from your shoulder and forward and to the other shoulder and forward to get out of this habit. Don't swing from out here. That's too much pressure on your shoulder. And if they close the gap, you're going to wrap your arm around them. You won't even hit them with your cane. If it's here, no matter where they come, the cane is between you and them and you're going to hit them with it. So from here to here, you're just going to practice this combination. This is angle one and angle two. Now this comes, a lot of these strikes come from Kali, Arnis, Eskrima. You'll see other styles with cane do this. Cane Fu has their own uh, techniques. Hapkido cane, martial arts cane, 
Kane Masters Worldwide, ASD Kane. There are a lot of different ways and different things that people are doing, but a lot of them are the same. A lot of them are very similar. This is one you're gonna find that's pretty common in most styles of cane self-defense, combat cane or self-defense cane or hapkido cane, any kind of cane self-defense, whether they use the cane master self-defense cane or not. From here forward and here forward. And if you like self-defense in any form or fashion or cane, or you're a senior self-defense person, or you're uh, interested in how to use a cane to protect your home and property, it's a, you look at it as a, an insurance policy, give me a thumbs up please and share this. Let's grow our martial arts online community. So from here, self-defense community. We're coming from the shoulder and the shoulder. Then turn your palm up and bring it up. Bring it up and through. And all of the strikes have to be through the center line and as tight in your body as possible. No big wide strikes, right? And, then, and yours will be. Use a, a mirror or a phone. Turn the camera on. Watch yourself. Let's get them tight, tight. Bring it up, bring it through and then come across horizontally, palm facing the sky, palm facing the ground to bring it back, straight down on top. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Immediately put it in the other hand and do the same thing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want you to do this at the end of every workout for the next 30 days and see if you don't become a cane master, a cane expert of the basics. You will be, I promise it. So from here, close to the body, Matthew says, absolutely. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is five minutes a day for 30 days. You're gonna be so good and all your tight or strikes are gonna get tighter and tighter and you're going to strike and you're gonna hear that whipping through the air and when you hit, there's no question in your mind that you're going to be able to generate enough power, stopping power, to stop the bad guy using your cane master, self-defense cane, or any other self-defense cane. Um, uh, Doug asked to keep the other hand open or closed to punch. I always keep my hand open because I like to use elbows more than I like to use punches. Um, when I was younger, I punched too many times, right? And after you injure your hands enough, Doug, you know what I'm talking about, you, you learn how to be more selective with your punching. So I'm, I'm more into elbows these days. So my hands are often open. I'm also going to be grabbing the other cane. And when I can, you know, I do a lot of the, the grappling, a lot of twisting, a lot of arm bars and takedowns kind of stuff. So I'm always looking for something to grab, whether it's his ear or a big chunk of skin on his face or stick that thumb right in his eye for self-defense or in through his mouth and all the way back. I, I believe in taking control for self-defense. Control their head and wherever you put their, you know this from being law enforcement, Doug, wherever you stick their head, that's where their body goes. So if you can get their head to pin to the floor, they're not getting off the floor, right? For the most point. So as fast as I can get their head onto the ground, whether I've knocked them unconscious with my cane master self-defense cane for self-defense, or <laughs> if I've taken a hold of them somehow, why do you think I have such short hair, right? Once you're a Marine and you learn why Marines don't have any hair when they go into uh, combat, and I've seen all these Marines with long hair again. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, there's a reason for short hair in the military than, and big beards. <laughs> beards are, I don't know why people wear beards and long hair. Anyway, um, yeah, and get your other hand on there for the thrust. But practice that combination. This is angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't worry about the feet so much. For the next 30 days, once your feet are ready to move, whichever, whichever, hand is holding the cane, put that foot forward and practice that. Later, you can learn how to constantly switch feet, and move like you're a, an FMA master or a guru or you're some kind of a, um, a sword fighting master and you're doing all the cool stuff, but don't worry about the footwork. Just stand up, get the feet under your body, get a good solid stance, and then you watch how this forces your stomach to engage and how strong you get just from five minutes a day, 30 days, Angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is by no means the end of it. That's just the beginning. Practice that. Let me know in the comment section. When you've practiced that for 30 days, come back to this video as many times as you can. Put some updates and comments in the video section. And then when you see other people make a comment, comment on their comments. Also, let me know where you're from. Where are you training from around the world? Let's grow our virtual dojo. Um, yeah, Matthew says he has to keep his balance. And Matthew, 
you can do all of this sitting until you can do it standing, until you can start stepping, right? Well, little by little, but as long as you move in that direction, I don't know what you can do. We've talked about this before. You don't know, only God knows. So we both need to get out of the way, let God do his work. Keep training. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. And happy new year. Thank you so much. Happy new year. It's been a great year because of you guys.